Edgar, greetings, cyber dogs and citizens of the interwebs. This is Ren Diggity Dog coming at you from the fields of the dog in this Let's Play Minecraft Survival Series. Hope you guys are having a fantabulous day out there wherever you are on planet Earth. It's a very rainy day in England today, my friends. It is raining outside, it is cold, it is miserable. And that means it's perfect weather for Minecraft survival. So here we are, once again in the Moleshire. The sun is setting, which is a little bit of a concern. I'm out here kicking things off with a little bit of farming, getting a little bit of wheat in the belly. Last time we were together, we were working on some really cool sugarcane farms inside of the molehole. We also got ourselves a brand new member of the family, Hell the Pig. <laughs> Which is awesome. Today, my friends, oh man, today we're going to have some fun. We're going to find a way to get all of this sugar cane that we are harvesting inside of the mole hole into the storage facility. And uh, as you guys can see, since we were last together, I have installed another bunch of these sugar cane farms. We now have a total of eight automatic sugar cane farms, but we got some problems. I mentioned in the last episode that these farms are actually lossless. Well, they're not lossless because as you can see, sometimes the sugar cane lands on this block over here because of these iron bars. So we're going to have to find a way to fix that. Uh, there's also a couple of other things that I want to do around the place before we get cracking today. We're going to head down into the mines of the dog at some point uh, today to do a bunch of mining. We need to get some iron in the belly uh, because we're going to make, need to make a whole bunch more hoppers for today's particular task. Uh, but before we get to any of that, guys, I want to say a massive thank you to everybody out there who has been commenting in the videos of this series. You guys have been absolutely amazing, man. Thank you to everybody who's been sending me tweets, who've been commenting on the videos. I'm getting so much inspiration from you guys. It is absolutely crazy. I want to go through a couple of these comments that I have read over the last couple of days because I think they're kind of interesting. Uh, someone on the Interbubs who's watching the series told me something kind of cool about Hell the Pig, who's chilling in this minecart right now. We can actually ride Hell. That's right, we can actually put a saddle on Hell and we can ride him around. And I'm thinking that's how we should kick off today's episode. Let's see if we can actually mount Hell and uh, get ourselves a little bit of a bacon steed going on. Hell the bacon steed. <laughs> Now, it's not quite as easy as just throwing a saddle onto Hell to get him to, uh, to actually obey us. Because he's a pig, and because he's quite an independent pig at that, we actually have to do something a little bit interesting to, to make it work. Check this out. We can stick a saddle on him, like a so, and I think this is going to allow us to sit on him, yeah. But we can't actually control him right now. I'm trying to move, but I can't, right? Because, well, pigs are smarter than mules, I guess, and they don't really listen to humans very much. The way that we do this is we got to make something called a carrot on a stick and we do that with the fishing rod and a carrot and apparently if we stick this on hell uh hell uh hell my 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 dude uh uh hell where have you where have you gone uh, oh there he is oh my goodness i thought he might have walked into the cactus and died hell my dude don't do that to me please don't just go wandering off like that okay check this out now we've got a carrot oh no that was very close to the cactus hell my dude you cannot go near the cactus okay hang on now we've got a carrot on the stick here uh can i actually control him yes i can look at this with the carrot on the stick we can actually control hell the pig which is amazing i guess he's chasing the carrot uh, eternally maybe pigs aren't as clever as i thought they were right uh, I'm thinking that Hell should become the custodian of the storage hole, uh, right? I think that could be a pretty cool place for Hell to live. Dude, get yourself in here. Can, can you get through a door, Hell? You you can't actually go through a door. Okay, that's uh, that's kind of interesting and kind of awkward at the same time. You can't actually get through this little space, Hell? Oh my goodness, you can. Okay, there we go. <laughs> All right, Hell, there, there you are. Actually, the carrot takes damage also, which is kind of interesting. But yeah, Hell is going to live in the storage hole. He is a very learned pig. He enjoys reading books and he also enjoys sorting out chess. He's got a bit of an OCD problem, does that pig. Uh, so, welcome to your new home, Hell. Dude, stop following me, man. Jeez. <laughs> Leave me alone, you crazy bacon face. All right, anyway, thank you to the cyber dog who told me about the carrot on the stick. That's, uh, that's kind of awesome. Uh, now, I want to deal with this little problem that we've got going on over here. This is another thing that one of you guys told me about. And at the moment, unfortunately, as I said, we're actually losing sugarcane over here. 
because some of that sugar cane is landing on that block, right? Take a look at this. Since we were last together, I've actually collected a little bit of sugar cane here. I've been in the area for quite some time. Well, not too much time, but I'm assuming we're losing quite a lot of sugar cane, actually, uh, because wherever I look, I can see that sugar cane stuck on the ledge over there, right? So we're going to fix this up by using some good old fashioned glass instead of iron bars makes me kind of sad. I really like how the iron bars look, but I do want these farms to function uh, as well as possible, right? Because, uh, yeah, we don't want to be losing sugarcane like that. Let's let that glass smelt up a bit. There's one more thing that I want to install here, which was told to me by probably three or four of you guys in the, in the comments of the previous episode. We can actually get the sugarcane growing a little bit faster, apparently. I'm not entirely sure whether this is true or not, though. Uh, but apparently, if we stick some glowstone above the, this uh, sugarcane instead of the redstone lampage that is actually going to help the sugarcane grow faster because now the light uh, source from the uh, the glowstone is actually going to make the sugarcane grow faster i'm not entirely sure if that is true but it is something that i want to experiment with so let me get some glowstone installed over here instead of the lamps unfortunately this does sort of lower the look of the place just a little bit i'm not entirely mad about how that glowstone looks about there but hopefully that will increase the growing speed of the sugarcane that might be a myth though. I'm not entirely sure about that one. Uh, anyway, we've got some glass smelting over here. We haven't actually used glass in the series yet, uh, so this is kind of interesting. Maybe glass will become a part of the block pallet inside of the molehole castle itself, uh, but we're going to have to do that instead of the um, instead of using these iron bars. So now when the, that sugar cane gets broken by the piston, there's nowhere for it to go but onto the sand, and that's going to be collected by the hoppers. And, and by the way, guys, another one of you guys uh, commented, or quite a few of you commented anyway, that we can actually grow sugar cane on dirt as well as sand so you don't have to grow your sugar cane on the sand if you guys are, are making these farms in your own world too you can actually grow it on dirt and on a grass also so um, I think I was a little bit wrong about that in the previous episode when I said that you have to grow it on sand uh, but anyway let's get this all upgraded nice and spiffily like a so and this is going to make sure that our sugar cane gets stored up in here uh, like nobody's business and hopefully with all of that glowstone that we're going to install that's going to help also uh, but yeah, thank you guys to everybody who's been commenting and leaving me all these amazing hints and tips. You guys are amazing. Keep it coming, okay? Keep your comments coming. I read them every single day and I take some serious inspiration from them. So uh, yeah, thanks guys. You're freaking awesome. <laughs> all right, there we go. Sabah digging it, dogs. Last of the glowstone has been installed into our little sugar cane farms. And I gotta say, man, I'm really enjoying this particular project. It's technical, but at the same time, it's not exactly the most technical project on the face of the earth. And one of the things that I'm trying really hard to achieve in my Minecraft career, I suppose, is trying to get a little bit better at redstone, trying to uh, learn some new factories and some new techniques that we can use to improve our lives in this beautiful game of Minecraft. And yeah, even though these aren't the most complicated of things, I don't know, I think the project's turning out really, really awesomely. Next up, we're going to try and get all of the sugar cane into our storage hole, which is going to be quite a technical thing to achieve. And I was thinking about this this morning uh, while I was having some coffee. Uh, in fact, I got a delicious cup of coffee here right now. Give me one second. Mm. Oh, and that reminds me, one of you guys actually asked me in the comments of the previous episode, Ren Diggity Dog, how do you take your coffee? Uh, I take my coffee black. I don't like any sugar or any milk or anything in it. I just like my like to have my coffee straight up, baby, like a man. You know what I'm saying? Only real men drink black coffee uh, or, or something. Uh, by the way, I've very recently cut all my hair off and shaved off my beard. So I guess I lost a man card when I did that. So black coffee helps to get my man card status back up to close to 100%. <laughs> Anyway, we're going to try and find a way to get the sugar cane into the storage hole. Now, there's a number of different ways that we can do this, right? I was thinking about this this morning. Number one, we could install one of those item spitting machines that we have down at the Mines of the Dog under each of these farms, right? So every time the sugar cane hits a, a hopper, the uh, the sugar cane will get spat out into an aqueduct that will be taken, taking the sugar cane all the way into the storage hole. But that means that we're going to have quite a lot of noise in the mole hole. Whenever one of these things triggers, uh, we're going to hear the sound of that red 
microphone clicking away. I'm not particularly happy about hearing all of that noise. So the other option is to get all of the sugar cane uh, filtered into one position, right? So here's what I'm thinking. We're going to need quite a few hoppers for this, and we can create a whole bunch of hopper chains that are going to take all of the sugar cane from all eight of our farms into a position over here somewhere, right? Now, this is actually a little bit more complicated than we think, because I don't want any of these aqueducts to run through the center of the mole hole. I want to build something in the middle of the mole hole, and I also want to build down, right? We might want to go downwards over here. So we've got to make sure these aqueducts go around the circumference of the mole hole, and uh, that means we're going to need quite a few hoppers uh, to take all of those items. Uh, I guess what we'll do is from this position, we'll take the, the items uh, in hoppers all the way over here, then we'll turn left, and this is where we will join up, and somewhere over here, we will have that item dispensing machine uh, to send that sugar cane into the storage hole. So we're going to need a ridiculous amount of iron to achieve this, and that means we're going to have to head down into the mines of the dog. Unfortunately, the sun has just gone down, which is a little bit concerning. I can smell creepers all around me right now. Let me just clear up my inventory over here uh, and probably sleep the night away. I've, I've been spending the morning cleaning up some chests around here. You might have noticed there's a few less chests around here, but as you can see, this is how I play Minecraft, man. I just drop stuff in the nearest chest, and I always just create more work for myself. Oh, it is so annoying. Uh, anyway, there we go. Night has been slept away. Good stuff. Let's get ourselves a little bit of armor for this particular adventure uh, because we're going to be uh, heading down into the mines of the dog. You never know what we could discover down there. And I don't know what armor I have over here. Oh, this is the Depth Strider armor. Uh, don't particularly want the Depth Strider boots. Let's take these boots. What are these? Frost Walker boots. Okay. Well, <laughs> I don't particularly want either of those. I guess Depth Strider will be okay if we come uh, into some water or something like that. Uh, in the minds of the dog. Anyway, there we go. Uh, we're ready to go. Now, um, I've done a lot of mining uh, off camera. In fact, I've done most of the mining for all of the items that we have in the series so far off camera. And I should probably drop off this uh, carrot on a stick too, right? Yeah, I guess I could just leave it up here somewhere. I'll remember where it is. Hell is in his, ho his house right now. I, I hope he doesn't wander away, but there we go. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I've done most of my mining off camera here in the minds of the dog. Mostly because it's kind of boring, you know? It's it's not boring for, for me. I absolutely love mining in Minecraft because I just put on some music or I put on a podcast or something and I just spend an hour down here hacking away. And uh, as you guys can see, I have done a ridiculous amount of stripping down here. Don't tell my mama though, okay? <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're, we've gone all the way down to about this position here and every three blocks or so I make a new tunnel and I've come to the very end of this particular tunnel. So I'm going to have to start making a new tunnel over here. And of course, what we're going to have to do is uh, just be a little bit smart here use our pickaxe to actually repair Terra um, and and you know when when there's an opportunity to get XP uh, with redstone or lapis or coal or any of those items uh, I'm gonna use that to repair Terra uh, uh, by the way I've got another awesome thing geez I had so many amazing comments in the last episode I've got another really great idea for the name of our fortune 3 pickaxe I asked you guys to leave me some ideas a few episodes ago and uh, you guys haven't disappointed I've got a great name for our brand new silk touch pickaxe Let's do that when we get back from this little mining session. But I tell you what, guys, I'm just going to settle in uh, for a nice morning of resource collection here in the Mines of the Dog. I got my coffee. It's raining outside. I can't think of anything better to do than just collect a bunch of iron from the Mines of the Dog. So I tell you what, guys, I'm going to complain the sucker. We'll see you on the other side. And uh, hopefully we'll have enough iron to complete or at least begin the task of sending all of that sugar cane into the storage hole. Kaplowy! I know this is going to sound kind of crazy, cyber diggity dogs, but one of my favorite things to do in Minecraft is this. And I've been doing this for six years now, and I'm still not tired of it. I absolutely love it, man. Nothing better than spending a rainy afternoon doing a bit of strip mining. You know what I'm saying, people? Oh my goodness. I've been down here for about an hour or so now, collecting resources out the wazoo like nobody's business. And uh, I think we're going to have enough iron now to make all the hoppers that we're going to need to complete the task at hand, which is getting all of that sugar cane from the mole hole into the storage hole. And yes, I know it's looking kind of crazy right now. Look how much I've been mining. Absolutely insane. Seem to have missed this little bit of lapis over here, though. So yeah, as you guys can see, since we started stripping this morning, I have dug about five or six different tunnels, and uh, I've managed to collect quite a lot of resources over here. Let me show you exactly how much I've managed 
to obtain. Uh, firstly, let's just turn all of this lapis into blocks and all of this redstone into blocks too. Just makes it a little bit easier to manage the inventory when you do some serious stripping in Minecraft. Uh, I've been depositing all of these items into our delivery chest over here. I think the minecart is actually full up, so we can send that on its way, actually. Yeah, this uh, this hopper minecart should be full of resources. Absolutely jam-packed. Let's send that on the way to start delivering those items into the storage hole. And here is where the meat and potatoes are, my friends. Look how much resources I've managed to get. 25 diamonds. Very, very nice. A whole bunch of iron ore and some gold ore. And maybe we should just take all of this with us now. Uh, and we can put it into the storage hole. So yeah, been a pretty successful morning of Minecrafting for the Ren Diggity Dog. Let's see if we can do a little bit of technical work on this very rainy Saturday morning. <laughs> now we be cooking with iron gas, baby. The fern eyes are fired up, smelting down all of that iron ore into the iron that we're going to need to create a butt ton of hoppers so we can complete our sugarcane factory project. And uh, the next step for us is going to be to try and find a way to get all of this sugarcane into the storage hole. Now, it's going to be a pretty easy thing to do, I think, but we're just going to have to be a little bit smart with how we do this. About 10 episodes or so, maybe it was a few more episodes than that, actually, we worked out a way to get items from the mines of the dog all the way up into the storage hole. And those items come via a water aqueduct and then they get pushed up an item elevator uh, to this position where they are deposited into this chest down here. We can still see some of those items coming up from our mining session and they're being collected over here. I want to try to get all of that sugar cane to land up here too, right? Now, we're not allowed to use F3 in this series, uh, which is going to make it a little bit tricky to figure out exactly where that water item aqueduct is. And, uh, well, I think we could probably do this quite easily, actually. We just have to make sure that we line up the aqueducts that we want to make over here. We know that there's going to be an aqueduct coming from the mole hole. It's going to be coming in this direction, basically. Um, and what we're going to do is send all of that sugar cane via a water aqueduct to join up with the other water aqueduct that is currently coming from the mines of the dock, right? So... If we're not going to use F3 for this, how exactly are we going to line up these aqueducts? I'm thinking maybe what we should do is follow this line all the way in this direction. So this is where all the sugar cane is going to be coming. And uh, it's going to be on this line over here, right? Let's just do a little bit of marking over here just so that we can make sure that we stay on the same line. And as we know, there is another water aqueduct that flows directly under this block line that goes into the center of the storage hole over here. So theoretically, if we dig down down in this position over here, we should dig straight into our other item aqueduct. And uh, what is going on over here? Oh, this is a little bit of water from a pond or something like that. So let's just get rid of this <laughs> so that doesn't mess with our, our aqueduct. Let's carry on digging down. And we should hit our item aqueduct at any moment if we just dig down. Hopefully, we won't hit any lava. Uh, okay, there we go. So there's the item aqueduct all the way down there, delivering those items uh, into the storage hole. Um, and I suppose what we're going to have to do is create some sort of a tube that is going to drop down the items uh, into this aqueduct over here, right? Looks like the brain isn't quite functioning as well as I thought it was today, guys. We're not going to actually use this tunnel to drop items into our item aqueduct. Doesn't this look awesome, by the way? Oh, I love it. I love seeing these items flowing down here. Uh, what we're going to have to do is make some sort of a staircase aqueduct from this position that's going to go all the way up to the mole hole. And th then those items are going to flow down here and drop off this edge. And uh, they're going to join the system to be pushed up into uh, the storage hole. So with that in mind, let's do a little bit of excavation over here. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks. And now what we can do maybe is go all the way upwards. Maybe what we should do is just to start off with, I know it's looking super janky and super ugly. Let's just dig a staircase all the way up here uh, and see where that is going to come out. This might in fact take us all the way up to the mole hole, which would be ideal, right? Because then we'll have a nice fast flowing staircase aqueduct. Uh, to get that sugar cane down from the mole hole super quickly. Uh, but let's see how far I can hear. Yeah, I can hear the bleating of, uh, of Victoria and Minamu right now. Uh, and Maximus, in fact. And this brings us basically all the way up to the entrance of the mole hole. Or almost up to the entrance of the mole hole. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, actually, that works out pretty good. Because what we can do now is just create our item aqueduct directly below our floor 
tower over here in the entrance of the mole hall. And this should take us all the way over here. Okay, perfect. That actually worked out pretty good. Nice. Uh, so I guess that should work out pretty decently. What we're going to have to do, though, is figure out exactly how this water is going to be flowing. Do I have any buckets of water over here? I'm, I think I've got some outside. The sun has just set, though. No, no buckets here either. Okay, well, let me sleep the night away, get some freaking water action up in here, and then we can start mapping this out a little bit. Oh, yes, before I forget, guys, I wanted to name our brand new Fortune 3 pickaxe in this episode, but unfortunately, we're going to need 32 levels to name this bad boy, and that means I'm going to have to go spend some time in the Scalabot farm to get all of that XP. So I'm going to leave a cliffhanger right here, my friends. Next episode, we'll name the Fortune 3 pickaxe, and it's going to be a name that one of you guys has suggested. So, yeah, we'll do that next time. We don't have time for that today, though. Uh, instead, let's focus on trying to finish this sugarcane item acquisition. Uh, over here. I've added a water source in this position. This is where we want to drop all of those items uh, from our hoppers, right? But I think we're probably going to have to go a little bit deeper than this, actually, because our sort of hopper dropping item mechanism thingy uh, requires about three blocks high to actually use, right? So let's just get rid of this water source for now and let's go down a couple of blocks over here. I think this is probably going to be deep enough. Uh, just, you know, just to make sure that everything is good and that we don't have to redo everything. Let's just go down one more level, actually, just to make sure that we don't derp this up too hard. Uh, the last thing I want to do is install an item aqueduct delivery system and then have to remake it because I've done the calculations incorrectly. <laughs> It happens a lot with the rain diggity dog, okay guys? It happens a lot. Uh, anyway, let's do it over here and let's see if we can actually get this done. Let's just make sure that we keep our buckets full. So I want to make a couple of uh, more buckets of water over here. We can do that by making an infinite water source using that first one. Uh, it's a little bit tricky because the water pushes you away all the time and then you have to kill the infinite water sources so that you get the original flow. But there we go. This should go all the way to this position. Now what we'll do is go one more down and we'll make kind of like a little bit of a staircase that's going to take us all the way down, right? Uh, we're getting pretty close actually to the bottom. So we shouldn't need to do this too much. Uh, that's going to take us all the way here. And theoretically speaking, if we stick the final bit of water here, it should take us all the way down to the bottom. But we're going to need another bucket of water over here. So let's just pick up an, a few more water sources. Kill that off just like we did before. And boom, baby, that's going to be flowing. That's going to go all the way to the edge here. Let's put another water source. Now, this should go over the edge. Um, yes, that's going to go over the edge of the staircase that we created, which is exactly what we need to do. And let's just make sure that we can get down here uh, so that we can see where this goes. Now, where is this water source going to end up? Is that going to go all the way to the edge? Oh, no. Okay. So that's a little bit too strong of a water source, right? That's going to flow one block too far. In fact, it looks like it's going to be a few blocks too far. So what I'm going to probably have to do is uh, dig this staircase another block up like this and hopefully I can get it configured that the water ends at the very very lip of this particular item duct over here right okay this should be perfect now guys I've shaved one block off the gradient of the staircase and this water flow should take us directly to the very edge uh, of this particular aqueduct which is going to drop any items that come in here into the water stream and there we go absolutely beautiful look at that that's perfectly connected let's just do a test over here if we throw a stone block that's going to drop off the edge nope because I picked it up. Let's try that one more time. Let's throw a couple of stone blocks like that and that should flow over the edge. Perfect. Into the other aqueduct to be taken into the storage hole. Okay. So we've got the sugarcane item aqueduct lined up perfectly and our next step for this project is going to be to find a way to automatically uh, push all of that sugarcane into this item aqueduct and we'll install one of those item dispensary machines that we've created a couple of times in this uh, series so far. So that should be quite a lot of fun. We're also going to have to make a bunch of hoppers though uh, because we're going to have to get all of the sugar cane from the eight different farms into this position over here somewhere. In fact we're probably going to have to make a little chamber uh, down here where we're going to install that item dispensing machine. It's probably going to be at about this level I guess. Uh, but unfortunately we're not going to be able to do that today guys. We have run out of time for the episode. Uh, we will continue with this in the next episode. I hope you have enjoyed this one though. If you have, you know what to do baby. Show me the love and you hit that 
that like button like nobody's business. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, well, I well, I don't really know what to say. If you haven't subscribed yet, I'm going to throw your butt into an item aqueduct. Your butt is going to be delivered into the molehole storage facility and then your body will no longer have a butt and the butt will be in a chest somewhere uh, for eternity and nobody wants to live without a butt in this world um, or something. Um, yeah. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't done it yet. Thank you guys so much for watching, man. We will see you all in the next episode. Rem Diggity Dog, sign it out.